I'm learning what Brad Pitt would do in this situation. Rule number one, Brad Pitt would never find himself in this situation. <coughs> and it so happens that at Georgia Tech, we have the, the absolute master of billiards, Professor Bunimovich in math department. You know, if he's teaching billiards, please take his course. He invented, together with Sinai, he was a graduate student of Sinai when they did this work, and you know, when he does it, it's much more elegant. Uh, my exposition will be very down to earth. It turns out, in some sense, billiards are to chaos what uh, harmonic oscillators to integrable system. You know, it's, they capture the essence of chaotic dynamics. So what's a billiard? Suppose we have a plane like the plane on this board. And we have a wall. And we cannot penetrate this wall. So outside the wall, we cannot go. Then there is a domain Q, which is the billet. There is the border of the billiard, which convention only written as a partial billiard. And the uh, complement of this is the entire plane, so R square, the blue region. This is the complement, so this is outside. Now we assume there is a little particle, which for us is a ball, like a billiard ball, snooker, or pinball, game ball. And this particle is moving and this is a physicist billet. So uh, this particle moves at constant velocity with no energy loss. There is no friction. And of course we can make very good billets of that kind on scales of centimeters and meters, but people like Professor Davidovich in this building make excellent billiards of two-dimensional uh, so electron gas billiards, or, you know, which are pretty much without friction. So <coughs> these kind of things exist. And you could shine the light, so there are very nice simulations of billiards dynamics where you shine the light, so that pretty much goes in the straight lines uh, in you know, classical electrodynamics, but it's very hard to make mirrors which are 100% mirrors. So, so the billiard that I'll do is very idealized. Now, in uh, and idealization comes in two places. One is that the velocity is constant, and the other one is so-called specular reflection, so specular. That comes from Latin for mirror, so a mirror reflection, speculum. And what happens with mirror reflection is that the parallel component of the velocity remains the same. So if, <coughs> if this was velocity vector, <coughs> then V parallel remains the same, but the perpendicular component, perpendicular to a unit vector, the 
also this border has every place. It's assumed to be smooth and have at least first derivative. Uh, so this perpendicular vector is well defined every place. <coughs> the perpendicular component just gets reversed. So if this was V T, this becomes minus V T. So we can write this as a formula. We can say that if this is velocity or momentum at time n plus 1. So we'll assume energy conservation. So uh, we assume free motion in between collisions. So that says the energy is just velocity squared. Uh, momentum square to n. <coughs> Free motion of two-dimensional vector in a plane. Then, you know, it will be convenient to set mass equals one. And to set uh, velocity equals one because it doesn't change in time, so might just as well measure lengths in units of time because velocity is the same. So whenever I talk about the time that went from being here and being there, that's actually the same as the length because velocity is one. The speed, not the velocity, but the speed is one. So then the law of reflection, uh, momentum at time p n plus 1. So after the impact, uh, well, let's say this is now impact n. So we count first impact, second impact, third impact, fourth. So the time is, there is integer time which is naturally defined. It's the same as the previous momentum, but we have to subtract the normal components. So we project the vector onto normal components. So we write uh, p dot n. And then we have to subtract the thing that was pointing this way, that way, that's minus. And, you know, the total momentum transfer to the immutable immobile wall is twice that. That's it, that's specular reflection. Now the phase space of the system, so I'll use phase space for Hamiltonian systems and state space for more general systems. So phase space, in my coordinates, is I'll have coordinate Q1, Q2, someplace in this bit. So it's Q1, Q2. And then we need to know the momenta to fully specify the state of the particle, with P1, P2. <coughs> but we have two constraints. You know, one is that we have energy conservation, and the other one is that we have velocity conservation. So this system is actually, it looks Phase space is four-dimensional, but dynamics is really two-dimensional. The domain Q subtracted, so that's this stuff. And in this case, the billiard is bounded. Uh, it could also be infinite extent, so here's another example that we'll use often. 
consider three disks in a plane. In that case, Q is infinite, and uh, these domains one are reflecting disks. So planar billiards are especially nice because we'll be able to do almost everything uh, analytically or semi-analytic. So take a particle of mass m, as we will have only one particle in our problem, we might just as well set mass equal to m. <coughs> Moving with momentum is m times the velocity of the particle. Moving freely until it hits the boundary, and then it reflects specularly. To blow this up a little bit, here is the wall of the billiard. We'll parameterize the length of the wall in clockwise direction by parameter s, where ds square is defined to be dx square, and dx uh, is a segment of the boundary delta q. So this is just curvilinear distance. So here we are, we hit it at n time, time will be integer, you know, we're just counting number of bounces. And uh, here we go. The law of reflection will be that the momentum parallel to the boundary, well, the two momentum in a plane is the momentum before minus the projection to the normal unit vector p dot n prime <coughs> in that direction. So in other words, we come in and we exit with the same angle in how the particle has bounced. And we'll measure the outgoing angle in the clockwise direction, phi, and we'll define the parallel momentum to the surface, p to be sine phi, sine of the outgoing angle. So if phi is 90 degrees, this is the full momentum. If it's not, it's a projection parallel to the wall. Now, because momentum conservation means that the speed or the magnitude of the momentum times the mass is conserved in reflection, energy is conserved, even though full state space, full phase space, particle position is described by two coordinates and two momenta, uh, 